back in there. Q School, session one, great to have you all here. We have a live audience as well as many people online. And the people online, we're gonna ask them to comment below and we're gonna ask them to uh, make sure that they can hear our audio. So I think Annie's in the room, Annie's testing us on Facebook. And uh, somebody jump on YouTube, Simon, jump on Cedarville YouTube and make sure that uh, they can hear us, okay? And Maria, why don't you uh, comment as well? Uh, and, and we'll see. Awesome. Great to have you here. Let me tell you what you're going to walk away with today. All right. Which, yep, we got you. We got you. So we can see the comments there. What you're going to walk away, away with today is the fact that um, you all have an incredible idea inside you. And let me just tell you this. First of all, you can't imagine something that cannot be created. Now, what's what? what we have a lot of Bible uh, people in the room who are going to have to filter this through their theology, which is good. We actually want you to do that. But I would argue that, uh, you know what, you can't even think of something that's impossible. What do you think? What do you think? Anybody? Think about that for a moment. Think about something and then try to tell me that that's impossible. In other words, God... God created humanity very differently than any other species. Last time I checked, there's no squirrels meeting in the backwoods saying, how can we build a skyscraper? Or how, how can we fly like the birds? You know, you, you don't see that. But humanity does think of that. Humanity said, hey, well, let's build cities of skyscrapers. Let's build airplanes. Let's build rockets. In other words, humanity is very different. Has anyone here ever said the word abracadabra? Anybody? Raise your hand if you did. Does anyone know what that word means? If you do, raise your hand because we have prizes in the house today. So does anyone know what the word abracadabra means? Anybody? All right. Let me ask you, if you study the scriptures, what did Jesus say uh, about his father? What's the Hebrew word? For father. Anybody? Yes. Abba. Interesting. Abracadabra actually comes from three Hebrew words, father, son, and spirit. And if you don't believe me, Google it. That's okay. You can totally Google it. You can fact check everything. But that's very interesting. Isn't that interesting? Does anyone know what the word abracadabra means? It means, yes. Let's give Ben a prize. Ben gets a, a thermos from the Plaster School of Business. Let's give him a hand. Yeah. All right. By the way, we have uh, 23 people on one channel watching, and we have a whole bunch of other places. So welcome, everybody. Uh, Scott, welcome. Jennifer. Let's ask them where they're all coming from today. I'd love to feature a few of their locations. The word abracadabra means it came to pass as it was spoken, or I create as I speak. Isn't that interesting? Think about that for a moment. God said, let there be light. Abracadabra, there was light. Whose image are we created in? Anybody? God's. We're created in God's image to co-create, and God himself imagined an idea, and then it came to pass. Now, as humans, there's a gap between dreaming and doing. Is this true? There's a, there's a gap. You know, Dr. Heyman has a hot rod idea, which is true. This is true. And then it takes a little while. Or I have a product here that I just bought today from the IBC. We're going to talk about this later on. But this is a fantastic product. Are those people in the room yet? Not yet. They're going to come at four. Fantastic. Super excited about that. Here's the point. You all have a dream inside you, and some of you are like, I'm not sure what it is yet. Does anyone here have a business idea inside them? Raise your hand. Raise your hand if you do. Wow. Wow. Okay, this is amazing. Lots of you have a business idea. We are going to do a lot of interaction. There's times where I'm going to break you into small groups. There's times where I'm going to give you an assignment in class today. Uh, I'd like Maria, if she hasn't yet, drop the URL with uh, everybody so that they can download the handout as well. Awesome. But here's what we're going to do. First of all, I'd love for you to pair up in, a, in, in with each other, twos or threes, and just say, you know what? 
here's a business idea I have, and then just share a couple minutes about that, okay? Say, you know what, I, I've, I've tried it, I'm about to try it, I've only thought of it, I'm not sure what it's about. This is a place where there's no judgment, there's no fear, and I want you to step up bold and do that, okay? So let's break into groups. You each get one minute and uh, share about your dream, and nobody can be alone. So you might have to jump in a group. Twos or threes, twos or threes. And I'm gonna speak to you all as well. Good to see you all. So thanks so much. We got Scott from Princeton. We have Tanisha, we have Donna. Uh, we have uh, all kinds of people. So I can see you. You let me know if you can see me and hear me, okay? So uh, Corbin, can you hear me? Uh, we got Team Daniel Academy. Let me know if you can hear me. Go ahead, type in the comments. We got Georgia. I love to see uh, people post so that I can know. Uh, Dr. Carrie Overrunner, hello. William Woods, Pittsburgh, yes. Okay, great. So you're all here, fantastic. At times, I'm gonna speak to you just like I am right now because they're, they're, we, we got a great crowd. In fact, I'm gonna show my camera here. Hopefully I don't knock anything out. But we got a lot of students here and uh, we got a lot of people here. And this is the live audience, but we're really doing this a lot for you as well. So do you all, have you all downloaded the handout? So Maria, you posted the link. What's that? Okay. Awesome. Perfect. So we're dropping the link right now. And Maria, I got it real easy. Why don't you come here for a second? I'm going to show you something. So I'm going to show you all. So just so you know what to do. So basically, I'm just going right here, and I'm going to hit that. Oh, I didn't see that link. Yeah, that's okay. So I'm going to hit that, and then I'm going to go copy, and then I'm going to share it with all these people so they can download it, okay? Perfect. And then I'm going to post it there. That's okay. So folks, now you should have it and uh, download it there. Let me know if you click download and if it works, all right? Again, let me know if you click download and if it opens. This is a writable PDF. Here's the trick with the writable PDF. You want to download it to your hard drive, and then you want to take notes. If you just open it up in your browser and take all these amazing notes, you may lose it if you don't save it, all right? So somebody download it and then say, yes, it works. All right, and then we're gonna keep going. Does that make sense? Let's give that a shot. Somebody post when it opens. Dr. Heyman, do you want me to send you the link? It's, e it's easy to do. You got it? Perfect. But I mean, do you have the, the handout uh, digitally? Okay. Yep. Uh, Nathan says, does the link work? Nathan, I'm going to put the link up on the uh, comments. I don't know if it's going to come in on LinkedIn uh, as well. It might not come in via LinkedIn, but that's that's the download. Okay. Uh, Team Daniel Academy got it. It works great. All right. So now we're going to jump in and we'll we'll get rolling. All right. Awesome, awesome. Thank you so much. Perfect. How many of you, uh, in fact, let's give your partner a hand, everybody. All right, yes, yes. All right. Great to have you here. Will, thank you, and Maria, and stop me if something's not showing the right way, but we have here Q School. I'll tell you why Q School started, and then we'll get right into it. Q School started because a lot of people started meeting with me and I said, oh my gosh, this is such an amazing group that we need to start something like this because I did not wanna just meet with uh, Kim, you know, one week and then wait six weeks because her business is working or Addie who's helping equestrian students virtually, right? There's so many people in the room. Willem's got this a fantastic music 
uh, switcher, for lack of a better term. You can explain it later. But lots of you have incredible inventions. And so let's jump right in. And now let's help you uh, do this. The first assignment I want you to do, you need a value proposition statement. You need a value proposition statement. Okay. Last time I checked, nobody's paying me because I'm a great hair model. All right. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, no one's paying me to use their shampoo. All right. So in other words, in the business world, you make money if you create value. Here's the problem. And in fact, start taking notes, folks. By the way, if you're online, you can take notes. Uh, that's a writable PDF. I just told everybody online, by the way, when you were in groups, if you open this up online, you must save it as a PDF. If you open this up in your browser and take all kinds of amazing notes, and then you close your browser, you may lose your amazing notes. So if you are working off of a laptop, save it to your hard drive, okay? A value proposition is a great formula. I'm going to teach you a formula. It's, it goes like this. I am blank who helps blank do or understand blank so that blank. Make sense? So what I want you to do, and I'm going to give you a sample so you can see, but those of you who know me, I know I've, I've, I've hung out with Annie and Luke a lot and other people in the room. This is my value proposition statement. And again, if I ever mention money, I'm not, I'm not bragging at all. I'm just trying to say that, you know what? Lots of times we see people stand up and we're like, are they even doing it? Or is this just theory? Is this just, is this like this sentence here? Thank the Lord has helped our, our business earn a lot. And I will tell you this, you can write down this quote, clarity attracts, confusion repels. Clarity attracts, confusion repels. That's from one of my books called The Deeper Path. But I say that because I got sick of going to networking meetings and I got sick of going up to people like, like you know, Nate. Nate's awesome, by the way, front row, good job. But you know, I didn't want to meet a Nate guy and for 25 minutes and walk away and say, that was an amazing guy and I want to refer business to him, but I have no idea what Nate does. Isn't that a bad situation where you like the person, you know they're amazing, you know they have a ton of passion, you want to send them clients, which is like the biggest compliment in the world, but you don't even know what they do. And some of you, let's be honest, you could talk for 30 minutes, 60 minutes, 90 minutes, and people would still not know what you're doing. Is this true? Come on. So here's what we do. This is my sentence. I am an igniter who helps entrepreneurs set free world-changing ideas by publishing, protecting, and promoting their intellectual property so they can turn it into 18 streams of income. Now, what's interesting is I even added two words since I wrote this last because I just had a breakthrough conversation the other day. And it's not just entrepreneurs, it's growth-minded entrepreneurs. So even my notes are obsolete, okay? But here's the point, like this is supposed to be a moving thing. Do not come here and be like, I figured out my VPS, it's there forever. So this sentence uh, is, is really our whole business. Now, I, I have a way to describe that business and I'll show you that on the next break where I can visually describe it, which is kind of cool, kind of important, but we'll get there. That's in week three, your buyer's journey, okay? But is there anyone right now who says, I wanna take a shot at telling my VPS? Is there anybody right now who says, ooh, I, I might know mine? Anybody? Well, let me give you a minute or two, all right? Take a minute or two. And again, I am blank who helps blank do or understand blank. So that blank, and you can ask me questions. You can come up if, you, if on a break, you, you need to ask a question, take two minutes and try to map yours out. All right. Try to map yours out. Awesome. And I love as well, we have prizes for the online crowd. 
I'd love for someone to type in theirs as well. You never know. You may find out you have a um, you have a future client here who's watching. Anybody stuck? Anybody need help? I am blank who helps blank do or understand blank so that blank. We've got Pennsylvania in the house, by the way, New Hampshire, all kinds of different states. Excellent. Anybody in the room know theirs? All right. By the way, you, you get the way you score big points here is to be bold. Okay. I love bold people. Uh, you cannot, you cannot fail here. In fact, the only way you fail is if you don't take a risk. So who wants, who wants to, um, who wants to share theirs? Yes. So here's the thing. Here's a little trick. By the way, Mr. Ornsby, right? Love it. Tell me your first name one more time. Daniel. So Daniel, awesome. You already get a prize just for volunteering. But secondly, I need you to come up here because there's nothing more annoying than the live audience hearing a little peep in the back and they can't hear it. So Daniel, come on up and uh, let's give Daniel a big hand, okay? Awesome. So Daniel, um, we met the other day. You, you blew my mind. You're right here. You're part of the reason why, why we're having this thing, but what, what do you got? Okay. So I'm struggling with the, so that, but okay. I'll give it a shot. Um, I have, I'm an engineer who helps open source innovators develop experiment with and create brain computer, uh, interface technology. So that, so that, yeah. So check it out. Love it. Was that amazing? Is that amazing? Read it one more time. I'm an engineer. I'm an engineer who helps open source innovators develop, experiment with, and create brain computer interface technology yep. so that. Yep. Like, Perfect. So a couple things. I'm going to coach him on this, okay? I'm going to coach him on this, folks. I'm an engineer who helps open source innovators. Do open source innovators know that that's their title? Probably not. Oh, okay. Very important, folks. A little coaching tips along here. All right. You want an aspirational term. Okay. You want an aspirational term because this actually may go on your LinkedIn. If I went on some of your LinkedIn right now and did a makeover, I would say, you know what? No wonder why you're poor. I'm just being real. I'm just being real. Okay. And I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Because most people, and some of you in my digital marketing class, you know the answer to this. Who LinkedIn gives you, I'm going to share the screen right now and show you all this. LinkedIn, this is a, we're, we're jumping ahead, but this is very important, Daniel. So LinkedIn gives you this really cool little uh, slogan here, and uh, it's right under your name. Do you know that? Do you realize, folks, that this little thing under your name, some of you in my digital marketing class, where does this go when you, where, uh, tell, put it this way. How do you how do you make this thing show up on LinkedIn? Yes, by commenting. If you have a value proposition statement underneath your name, and if it's best-selling author, sweet dude, Cedarville student, that's what gets pulled in every time you. Comment. So you can literally have as some of your marketing strategy to go on like-minded LinkedIn people's profiles and give a sincere comment underneath their post about what they're doing and what's it gonna pull, anybody? What's it gonna pull? You're working on it right now? You can cheat, look at your sheet. What is it gonna pull? It's gonna pull your VPS right there on every single comment you make. Does this make sense? 
So if people don't know they're open source innovators, they're never going to find him. Is this true? So is that a too technical of a term? Possibly. I would say there's a possibility they wouldn't know they're open source innovators. Okay, so I'm an engineer who helps innovators. Mm -hmm. That's better. Develop, experiment, and create. What do you think? Too complex? Develop, experiment, and create. I don't think that's too complex. Okay, so you think they'll understand that? You help mm -hmm. innovators do that? And create brain-computer interface so that. And yeah. here's the thing, folks. The so that has to solve a problem. It has to, it has to create a good benefit. So why are we hiring you? Um, essentially, I'm providing either like a data set or a technological hardware solution. Love it. When what? Going to help me do. Um, it's going to help you like produce research, academic research. And why do I need ac academic research? Because in the academic world, you need so many papers to become a professor, or you need to pass doctoral school, and resources are limited, so you can't pay for top shelf. Yes, and there's a C word that I'm looking for. Why does why do professors? Yes. Did you catch that? All the other jargon was to really get to the point of credibility. So the whole reason I'm hiring this, this guy is he's gonna give me what? Credibility, you see the difference? Mm -hmm. So does that help? Yeah. Okay, awesome, so, so make a change and that's very helpful, okay? Love that, anybody else? Yeah, let's give him a hand. And by the way, I wanna see that on your LinkedIn by the next time we meet, okay? Anyone else want to take a shot? This, this, is, this is your free coaching. I see someone poking Addy. Come on up, Addy. Let's give Addy a hand. All right, all right. And we might, we might even have somebody online in a moment as well. So feel free, folks, online to go ahead and post yours. Ooh, we have a brave person. We might get to him in, in a moment, Team Daniel. Yes, come on, Addy. And again, my mic's here, so what do you got? Um, I am an experienced and passionate equine trainer who helps virtual riding students achieve their riding and training goals safely so that they be can become the riders they dream of. Oh, that's pretty good. That's, you, you like that? So I am a experienced, passionate equine trainer who helps virtual riding students achieve their riding training goals so that they can become the riders they've always dreamed of. Now, I'm going to coach her again. I'm going to be very unfiltered here right? Because that's the way we grow. We call this truth telling. Ask yourself, write this on the side. This is side. This is for free. This is extra. Who are my truth tellers? Who are my truth tellers? You need you. My wife is a truth teller. Oh my gosh. She is a truth teller. She tells me what's up, right? But I need it. So she said one word in there three times. What word did she say? Did anyone know? Writer. In writing, I get it. God can say it three times. Holy, holy, holy. He, God can do that. But in writing, do we want to say the same thing in such a condensed spot? What do you think? What do you think? No. So I am an experienced, passionate equine trainer, right? Let's, 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 every word needs to pay us money. I'm just being real. Otherwise, take it away. This is why Steve Jobs was really successful. Steve Jobs looked at design and said, look, what can we remove? Because if you have too many messages, does anyone know how much ads you see every single day? Yep, 5,000 ads a day. You make 35,000 decisions. By the way, you can fact check everything, just Google it. You'll find different research, but it's close. But here's the point, we're way overwhelmed. This is why at the end of the day we say, I'm burned out, I'm fatigued, I'm running on fumes. I'm going on empty. We say all these energy words. So every word needs to pay, pay us. I am an experienced, passionate equine trainer. Do we need all those words? We do not need what, what, words. What, how could we summarize? We could just say I'm an equine trainer. Okay, I am an equine trainer. Why, why use two adjectives? Why stop at two? Let's use 22, right? So I am a equine trainer who helps virtual riding students achieve their goals safely 
so that they can become the writers they've always dreamed of. You can even change that writer to equestrian. So that they can be, become the equestrian of their dreams. You don't want to end with an of, okay? Is that good? That's good. Let's give her a hand. All right. All right, now let's take our guy right here and then we'll, we'll move on. I'm a teacher and myth buster who helps women between the ages of 28 and 68 overcome their internal hindrances so they can fulfill their present and future aspirations. Awesome. I'm going to ask you all now that you got the hang of it, right? What, what, is, what is right or wrong? Not right or wrong. How could we make this better? What do you think? What do you think? I am a teacher and myth buster. Now, here's what I'm going to ask you about. I chose a word igniter. Pretty interesting word. There's not many people walking around in the world saying, you know what? I need an igniter. I mean, unless they're going to light a fire. I don't know. Maybe. But I chose that word because it, it's my brand, igniting souls. So I kind of want people to be like, hmm, that's interesting. But do we really need Mythbuster? I don't know. In other words, if, if people don't know your label, you're going to have to use a few. How many of you are in my digital marketing class? What does Donald Miller talk about? If, if it takes too many what? Calories. If it takes too many calories, people are going to lose focus. So I am a teacher and myth buster. Now, are they starting to think about the TV show? And they're like, what is a myth buster? I don't even know what a myth buster is. So I would encourage you to really choose a word that's you. Okay? Choose a word that's you. That, that if, if you really want people to use brain, cal brain calories right there, that's fine. And let me ask you a question. This is a funny little thing. If you have a toothache, that's not funny, but if you have a toothache and you're in Colorado and you see two signs for two businesses and one says taxidermy, ski instructor, massage therapist, and dentist, or you look over here and you see dentist, which one are you going to? You're going to the, we call it, write this down, CCD. Clear, concise, direct. CCD. We are going to the dentist. I see too many people say all the things that they do. Come on now. Is this true? You might see this on somebody's LinkedIn. I mean, I used to do this. I'm a speaker and coach and author and husband and father and cyclist and blah, 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 blah. Do people care? Come on, let's be honest. Do people care? No. In fact, uh, we did this the other day in this classroom. What's the radio station? Some of you might remember. What's the radio station that everybody cares about, that everybody listens to? Remember this? This is a little funny thing. What? Yeah. W-I-I-F-M. What does it stand for? What's in it for me? What's in it for me? That's everyone's favorite radio station. What's in it for me? W-I-I-F-M? I'm not good at counting, but I think that was right. Okay. You get the point? Some of you are in the digital marketing class. If you want to attract business, are you the hero or the guide? The guide. Why? Everybody wants to be their own hero. They don't want to hire you to be the hero. Because then they get a little nervous and say, well, are they going to be my competitor? They want to hire a guide. So did Addie present herself as a guide? Yes, she did. Do you think there's some parents who say, we need her? They live in an area. In fact, I'm not even going to tell you the answer. Who's people that might hire Addie? What do you think? You heard her value proposition statement. Who's going to be reaching out to her? Just shout it out. Like, just, I don't know. Yes, your friend. 
Ooh, people who live in an area where they don't have a lot of those. In, and why? Why? Because she used a keyword. Which word? Virtual, but yes, online. Absolutely. You see how that word is super important? Who else might hire her? What's that? Any parents. Okay. So one is location. Love it. What if you had a flyer in out of state, right? It'd be very expensive, right? But now we know that her rate maybe isn't going to be as astronomical of flying her in. Interesting. Okay. So let's go back to Team Daniel Academy. Glad you're with us today. Thanks, uh, Cedarville, for sponsoring this. But I am a teacher and myth buster who helps women between the ages of 28 and 68. Let me ask you, Team Daniel, I'm being silly. What if someone comes to you and they're 27? Up. Oh. Do they got to wait a year? Here, take a ticket. You got to take a rain check. What if, what if they're 69 or 70? And he might, or he or she might say, no, they're not my client. Maybe. But, but do you see, I mean, there, there, there could be a danger in being too specific. I don't know. What if they're 27 and three quarters? Nope. According to the VPS. You see what I'm saying? So does anyone know there's a marketing term? Is he using demographics or psychographics with that statement? What do you think? What do you think? And we might not even know what those terms are, but that's okay. We're going to find out today. What's, what's, a, what's, are they using demographics or psychographics? Take a guess. Demographics. Yes. Demographics. So he's using, or she's using demographics for this. Identify and overcome internal hindrances so they can fulfill their present and future aspirations. So I'm going to tell you that there's two, I, this is me and I don't know this person and thank you for being honest and we love them. But I'm going to say they're being too vague. I mean, think about it. I, I could think of all kinds of, like, is this being too big? There's a quote. Do you know about this? The riches are in the niches. Interesting. The riches are in the niches. Ooh, ooh. Somebody write that down. Uh, that's not my own. That's good. The riches are in the niches. Folks, the point is this. That might be too vague. Because I don't know any women. I mean, you tell me we got some women in the back that I that are between 28 and 68. I'm thinking. I'm thinking. I'm not guessing age. I'm, I'm thinking. I'm thinking they're 29 at least. I'm thinking. Some of them. 29. So we got some 29-year-old women in the back. And think of your friends. Is there anyone who doesn't qualify with a internal hindrance? I don't know. I mean, last time I checked, that's every woman alive. You see what I'm saying? Is this true? I don't know. So my, it's every human a lot. So, so is it a good strategy to say my target audience is every human in the world? Last time I checked, that's a good thing for God to say about our salvation, for God to love the world. But other than God, I don't think that's a good marketing target audience strategy. Okay. So let's get, let's get narrower. All right. Let's jump in. Next thing, here we go. Ooh, we're going fast now. I do get excited. I do get off track. So we're going to start going fast here. And by the way, you can take this home. You can think about it. You can rewatch it. Check it out. Here's, the, here's what I want you to realize. So my, one of my companies is a publishing company. And I tell people, when you write a book, you are going to write as a sage, a Sherpa, or a struggler. That's, that's, that's the tone of your book. Does anyone tell me a book that they read where the author takes on a sage role in the book? The book. What do you think? You might just shout out a name. That's a book written by, a, by somebody who presents themselves as a sage. What do you think? Anybody? Yes. Atomic Habits, James Clear. I, 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 did a, I did smoothies with him in Columbus. He's from Columbus. Did you know that? James Clear. I talked to him before he was famous. 
Now he doesn't pick up the phone. That's okay. That's one of the most popular books on the planet right now. But he presents himself as a sage. In other words, he did the research. How do you present yourself as a Sherpa? What is a Sherpa? What do you think? Anybody? Yeah. A guide. Did the Sherpa ever climb the mountain before? Interesting. Interesting. So the sage is sitting on top of the mountain, and that's where they sit, and people have to go find them. So Tony Robbins clearly presents himself as a sage. Hint, look at the front cover. It's his face. Okay? So that's a, that's a trick. How do you know if somebody is a sage? Well, if they're on the front cover, they probably are presenting themselves as a branding strategy as the sage. The Sherpa doesn't sit on the mound. They climb down the mound to help you make it to the top. Addie, look at Addie. Did Addie present herself as a sage or a, or a Sherpa in that statement? I don't know. We, we, could, we could debate it, right? But she, I think she kind of said that she was the sage, but we're going we're gonna to unpack what her origin story is. Because let me guess, you once struggled yourself. And see, that's the beauty of your story. A really good website. What's, some of you are in my class. What's the most common visited page on a website besides the homepage? Anybody? The about page. The about page is where you put your origin story. Does this make sense? So you want to say, by the way, folks, hint, when I spoke in chapel for five minutes the, the other day, how did I present myself as a Sherpa in the first 30 seconds? Anyone remember? Yes. When I was in college in a bad place and I struggled with depression and self-injury. Why did I share that? When I, I get five minutes to speak in front of all of Cedarville, and in the first 30 seconds, I'm sharing my deepest, darkest struggle. Why am I doing that? Yes. Makes me relatable. Interesting. In fact, before I talked about my depression, what did I, what did I say? Something about my hair loss. Remember this? So folks, listen, as a communicator, you have to connect with your audience. And so I often connect with my audience by saying, I'm not all that. Okay, and I struggled. But here's the Sherpa. But I found a solution. So write this down, folks. What you're selling people, what most of you are going to sell people, is a framework. And check this out. Give, somebody give me a definition for a framework. What is a framework? What is a framework? So Daniel in the back, right, Daniel? Daniel probably has a framework. And write this down. A framework is a solution broken down into simple steps. That is a framework. A framework is a solution broken down into simple steps. So if Addie really wants to go big time, she will, she will take her technique and say that this is called the Addie Equine Method. Now, I don't know if that's the real name, but do you see how she just went from this to this in the person's mind? Did she? I mean, think about this. Uh, we have uh, Joni in the back, right? Joni is amazing at helping people uh, with identity, right? But she's also an amazing math teacher. And we've sat down, we've had some talks. But imagine if she comes up with a framework that when you sit down with her, she says, this is the process that I take you through. Is that pretty cool? I'm going to show a, docu a really quick slide. This slide, and I'm going to try to share it with the uh, online people as well. Here's an example, folks, um, of, of, what I, of what I want to show you. So how, how, how is this for a quick Sherpa story? My name's Kerry. I'm a bald guy with a girl's name. I always wanted to write books. Why? Because uh, writing is what actually helped me overcome self-injury. And when I published my first books, they didn't sell at all. Nobody bought my books. There's nothing more frustrating in the world than writing a book and nobody even wants to buy it. 
So what did I do? I realized that, you know what? I was looking at my book as the end of a relationship. Think about it. You write a book and you're like, to Nate, have a good life. I'll never see you again. To David, best wishes. I'll never see you again, right? I was treating my book as the end of a relationship. The world changed when I stopped viewing my book as a business card and instead as a business. And so next time I wrote a book, I actually turned that book into 18 streams of income. And people began to finish the book and they said, what's next? Ooh, I want to join your program. Ooh, do you have a live event? And this method is something that I began to do. And then guess what? People began to ask me how to do it. But I was too ignorant to realize, because I had never taken a business class, that there was a business model. I just said, ah, it's complicated. Ah, I can't talk to you. But then when I realized, you know what? By asking for my advice, they were asking for my help. So I took that and I turned it into this framework. And now today, we help people turn their books into businesses. And it's 18 streams of income. And we have a whole process. Are you interested if you're an author? What do you think? Anybody? So here's what I did, folks. And this is what I'm going to ask you to do. Everybody starts out as a struggler. Is this true? I'm going to, I'm going to ask, I'm going to ask, uh, I'm going to ask Jay in the back. Jay builds what? Jay builds wooden bicycles. Is that cool or what? Wooden bicycles. Jay, did you just pop out of your, 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 your mom one day and you said, you know what? I, I know how to build wooden bicycles. No, it didn't happen at the age of one, two, three. Did you struggle in the beginning? Did you then find a way? Guess what Jay now teaches people to do? What do you think? If you had a guess, what does Jay actually do? What do you think? He, he offers what, where he teaches what? What do you think? Yes. He teaches courses and workshops where they come and they literally build their own wooden bike. Is this true? Smart man. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to take a few minutes and jot down a few details about your struggling phase. I used to not be able to talk because of stage fright. I used to struggle with deep anxiety. I used to blah, blah, blah. Like, I don't know. I don't know what it is. And I'm not saying you need to share your deepest, darkest secrets, but I'm saying regarding your business solution, you didn't just arrive on the scene as a sage. So talk about the struggler for a few sentences. Just, you know, I felt horrible. It was in 2016. Write a few details. Just start jotting down. No, no pen can be unmoving. Otherwise, I'll, I'll write your struggle for you. Okay. So write a few struggles online as well. And let, let's, let's see that. Okay. Write in a few struggles. All right, who in the room wants to share just a line, a line or two, anybody? It could be about your business. Again, it doesn't need to be a personal struggle. It can be a personal struggle, but anyone want to share? Yes, anybody? Yes, what do you got? Crown chains. In fact, come on up, Ben. Ben was, uh, thank you, Ben. I got to give this guy a shout out, by the way. He, he, my son came on campus today, new person, and he spent time talking to Keegan and, oh, a great guy. and I, I left them because I'm like, I, dad does not want to get involved and you just helped them out. So thank you. No, absolutely, thank you. man. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm one of 10 people on the team for Crown Chains and all of us have been working together. And one of the first things that we had to ask ourselves when we were developing this company last year was what are we going to do to make ourselves different? Because we knew we wanted to be a company that sold chains, and aside from making them more affordable, we had to come up with things that were innovative. And shout out to Dr. Luke Fredette, who's over here in the back. Hey. He is one of the biggest reasons that we became innovative. Wow. 
he's the one who helped us create the crown of thorns pendant that we sell that is recognized by a couple people on campus at this point yeah so we had to put our heads together and figure out what we were going to do to be different okay and so the whole team all 10 of us started cooking up ideas and the crown of thorns pendant is what we came up with to be unique and represent our faith and make that part of the company and so that was our thing as our staple piece so could he write that as part of their about story we wanted, and remember your new tagline, what's your new tagline? Uh, we had talked about doing connecting communities. Connecting communities. So we started this company in order to connect communities, but we struggled. We didn't know what image would illustrate that, but we came up with a crown, crown, cross? Yep, the crown and the cross. The like crown and the cross, and then he tells the story, right? You see, does that make the product more interesting, folks? What do you think? This is why people buy art a lot of times is because there's a story behind it. Awesome. Good job. Okay. Thank you. So what I want you to realize is that you need to tell your origin story on your about page. So I'm really helping you build your website right now. I'm helping you say, you know what? We got a homepage. The homepage needs to mention our VPS, right? In some form or fashion. Guess what? Then we have a uh, origin story, which is the about page. And then we offer the product and service. Okay. All right. I'm going to go on to the next page. We're going to keep rolling. What problem are you solving? So write down what problem are you solving? Willem, come on up here, my friend. Willem is solving a problem. I probably insulted him with a switcher box, but it's probably more complex than that. But what problem does your device solve? So the main problem we are solving is for musicians trying to trigger tracks while they're performing, a way to do that discreetly so you can maintain your audience engagement. Okay, now check this out, folks. This is really important. You're either selling vitamins or aspirins. What do I mean by that? Yes, in the back. Okay, interesting, I like that. I like it a lot. I like half of it. I like half of it, okay? So, I, I'm not going with the time frame. What does aspirin do for you? Pain reliever. So you either present yourself as relieving pain. What do vitamins do or supplements or what? What do they do? <laughs> you weren't raising your hand, my bad. Vitamins cure you? Okay. So, vi yeah. Preventative? Okay. So, they, they, they should, like, enhance, right? That's kind of my method. The, my, and this is, I didn't come up with this. But this is, this is like, you're enhancing your life. So, what pain might you be solving? If I'm on stage and I'm messing with my thing and I'm, I'm in front of the audience and I'm trying to switch my thing or trigger my thing, what am I... What pain am I feeling? Um, so it's like you're a, a singer at a restaurant and you're singing over backtracks. Yeah. And say in between uh, switching to the next song, you would actually like say something in the microphone, or talk to people. You don't want to have to like awkwardly be looking down to, to press the foot switch or awkwardly like going over to a laptop to hit a button. I like that. Be able to I like keep that. Looking at the audience and talking to them. I like that, but there's more. What pain? Am I experiencing if I'm if I'm doing that? He said a little bit of it. Yes. Awkwardness. Yes. Let's go deeper. Yes. Okay. So as humans, do any of us want to look what? Do we want to look incapable, foolish, embarrassed? Whatever. You fill in the blank. So he's if he he could market his product as Stop looking like a complete fool on stage. Is this true? Like this, is this a good marketing angle? What do you think? Or how if, what if he, what if he sells his product as vitamins? How would he twist it a little bit? What would he do? Yes. Step on stage like a complete rock star, even though you're only a band of one. Ooh, that's interesting. You should have written that. I, I forgot that. I forgot that. But you get my point? So one is that he presents himself as save yourself from looking like a fool. The other one is look like a complete rock star. 
that's going to be two completely different marketing campaigns. Does this make sense? Good job. Awesome. All right. So I want you to write down, and, and how many of you, let's take a vote. How many of you are selling vitamins, do you think, that that would be a good angle? Yes? I see a few. How many of you are, you say, uh, what, what's the other one? Aspirin. You? What, do you? what do you think you're selling, Simon? You work for Cutco, and there's somebody else in the room who works for Cutco's. And you guys are successful. Some of you have sold over $30,000 of knives in the room. Is that unbelievable? So, so Simon, come on up here. Simon, what? Yeah, yeah. So, so what's the pain of uh, what? What's the pain of Cutco? Is that what you said? Yeah. So the idea is Cutco is like, for those that don't know, it's a high quality kitchen product, and it's like the number one rated one. It's all American made, it's forever guaranteed. So a lot of people buy uh, knives and stuff for the kitchen or cookware and whatever, and it just doesn't last. So it, here's the whole two minute sales pitch, but it just <laughs> kind of falls apart really quick. It only lasts a few years. So the idea is you get really high quality cutting. So it just becomes easy and fun in the kitchen. And then it's got a forever guarantee. So it lasts forever and gotcha. replace and fix everything. What was the first 30 seconds of his pitch? Was it features or benefits? Did you catch that? And I know some of us might've tuned out. We might've missed it. it. Might be like, dude, it's like four what, you know, on a Friday. Does anyone, can anyone guess? Was he selling features or benefits in the beginning? The first 30 seconds. Benefits, anyone else? Features? Why do you say that? Why do you say that? What? Okay. Interesting. So I didn't understand features and benefits for a lot of years. I get it. So, so the difference is that American made. Is anyone is anyone walking in around in their kitchen saying, "I wish I had American made." You know? Is that, I mean, is that is that is that a pain point? People are like, "I wish I had American made." Not <laughs> when the Chinese one breaks. <laughs> I get you. I get you. So how did he end it? You can then cook in the kitchen and it's blank and blank. Did you catch that? What did he say? Fun. So he said easy and fun. So now he's really selling easy and fun. Tell your parents. <laughs> <laughs> but, the, but the vehicle is a knife. Interesting. Okay. Really good job, really good job, awesome. Okay, yeah, yeah, good job. So here's the question, uh, question number three, again, you're doing great folks, uh, love it. How do you know you served your client well? How do you know you served your client well? Because they created 18 streams of income from their book. Because they are having easy and fun in their kitchen now when they cook. You tell me. How do you know you serve your client well? If you don't know, they won't know. And that's why some of us aren't making sales. Anyone? All right. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take a, uh, a one-minute break. Uh, you're going to talk in your groups about your biggest takeaway thus far. One minute, talk in your group. What's the biggest takeaway thus far? And uh, I know a few of you, you got to run to a sport. I get it. Uh, but what is the number one takeaway so far? Talk in your groups as well as online. I'd love to see you post it. We're going to be giving away a, uh, a prize online as well to the most engaged member. So surprise me online. And uh, you all, if you can post in your biggest takeaway so far. Okay. And then again, I'm going to be giving away uh, my dream job course. It's a $300 course. We're going to be giving it away for absolutely free. Um, but we need you to post what's your biggest takeaway so far. And Maria is going to pick a winner. All right. So go ahead. We'll give you the next two minutes to type that out.
Good job, Nathan. Reinforcement of CCD, clear, concise, direct, not easy. But wait, there's more. Scott, biggest takeaway, be specific and targeted so that they get it. William, takeaway, clarity attracts, confusion repels. Ooh, I'm thinking, Will, I'm, I'm, think, Will, I'm thinking this is your dad. Is that your dad? Yeah. Awesome. Uh, too many words creates too much confusion. Yes. All right, uh, Dana, good job. So everybody remember, um, what I want you to do is post your comment. Maria, you're gonna give uh, Dream Job Bootcamp to the most engaged member. A lot of these people are posting comments. We also want them to share the live stream so that other people can learn about this. And we want them to tag a friend who needs to hear it. And then in the next three minutes, Whoever's the most engaged member, comment, tag, share. They can, uh, they can, uh, you can, you can pick a prize winner. Okay, how you doing? Good, good. So, so good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you. So, uh, just grab a seat right, right there, and uh, I'll, I'll bring you on in a minute. Okay, awesome. All right, awesome. So let's hear let's hear an example. Um, let's hear uh, let's hear somebody share. So I bought I bought uh, I bought greeting cards from somebody in the room the other day. Over here in the blue. So you you can, if you come to my office, man, I just I, I just buy things from you. So I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't do that all the time. But you you have an Etsy business. And you are you are saving, or I'll tell you what, what. What's your biggest takeaway so far? Ways that you can apply. So you're like in the value proposition statement. Love it. Okay, love it. This is fantastic. Um, let's jump in now. Uh, one other person who's got one more. Go ahead, share. What's your biggest takeaway so far? This helps cement the learning. Anybody? Yes. Yes. Love it. Hopefully, next time you watch a uh, commercial, you're going to say, oh, they're selling vitamins. You know, you'll tell your friend, oh, watch this, they're selling aspirin. Or that's their value proposition statement. Or they're not, they weren't CCD. You know, start practicing this. Okay. Um, here, this is called demographics. And by the way, there's a really cool trick. Cool trick, folks. Magazines. Mag, right, listen to this. I'm, I'm literally going to give you over $100,000 worth of value right here. This is true. Magazines create a sponsorship demographic guide. So if, if you say, my audience readers are Forbes, Forbes readers are my target audience. You go online and you Google Forbes marketing package or Forbes advertisement package. And when you do that, in fact, we're going to try it. I'm going to mute it just because I don't want to look dumb here, okay? And I want to make sure it works. Because so I don't want to look dumb. Like like, like Willem's uh, music device is going to help me, right? So Forbes Marketing Package. Ah, there it is. Oh, wow, folks. Oh, wow. Let's share this. Here we go. This little piece of advice, I'm not even kidding. They spent hundreds of thousands of dollars 
creating this. Do you see this? You could do this for any magazine. You can do it for Hot Rod. You could do it for Equine. You could do it for anything. Anything that has, a, a, anything that's selling advertisement. They have what's called a media kit. You click the media kit and they will tell you all the things about their demographic, how much they make, how, what their education is, what their uh, success is. You see this? Is this true? Here's my point, folks. Like They're going to go into all the demographics, all the psychographics, everything that that person is, who the readership is. This is amazing. There are companies that spend hundreds of thousands of dollars studying who your exact demographic is. If you just know what kind of magazines they read, what kind of movies they watch, what kind of music they listen to, that's the strategy. Does that make sense? You all didn't act like I gave you $100,000. Okay, no, I'm kidding. You take that and, and just, it's called, that one was called the media kit, but I know that every single person who's selling media has had to create a demographic and psychographic publication. That's how they sell ads, okay? Make sense? So when we get back to your uh, sheet here, let's go to your sheet. Where does your audience live? So remind me again, Etsy woman. Anastasia, that's right. So Anastasia could literally take this back in her dorm and say, where do my buyers live? What level of education do they have? Who, who influences them? What's their voice? Let's just take a shot. Why is this important for her to do this? Let's just think through this for a moment. Why should we know these things? Page uh, six. Why? How is that going to help? Yes. You can target your marketing. Interesting. How do you market? Let's talk about the different ways to market. What are some different ways of marketing? What do you got? Yes. Social media. Okay. Interesting. Social media. You can totally do social media ads. Are there groups that are free? that she could join, what do you think? Where are these groups? What are they called? Where do you find them? What's that? Forums. So forums. I mean, you, you all are in different things than me. Um, anyone here on Discord? Interesting. Anyone here on, what is it, Twitch? Okay, anyone here on is it Threads? Is that still a thing? Yeah? Here's the point. Like, you all know so many platforms that I don't even, What's ones that we have that aren't like the normal ones that yet you have community around? Anybody? Snapchat? Reddit? Is it called Be Real? Right? What's that? Whatever that is. All right, cool. So here's the, yeah. Here's the point, folks. You can do paid advertisement, okay? or you can do free advertising. You could be a community member in these things adding value. Yes. Paid? Okay. So there's there's um there's earned media and paid media. What's an example of earned media? Anyone? What do you think? Earned media. Crown Chains is he still in the room? Crown Chains Ben. You just got earned media. Remember that? And I reshared it. What was that? Borrowed the platform. And who, who wrote a story about Crown Chains? Cedarville News wrote a story about Crown Chains. That's called Earn Media. Did you pay them? No, not directly, right? So that's my point. Like that was an Earn Media story that he didn't even have to pay for, right? Makes sense? But, but so that's the difference between paid and earned. Paid is where you actually have to pay for it. But a lot of these community groups, if you go in there and you're helpful, that's a great strategy. And what do you know about like uh, the top of your Instagram? What, what can you, what do you put at the top? What? 
Stories, okay. Tagline, love it. Can you put a link? Link. So you guys, like all these social media platforms, if you know how to use them, you could be funneling if you have clarity, all right? Okay, let's keep going. Psychographic, does anyone know what psychographic means? It's like motivations, motivations, right? Motivation, desire, what do they value? What are they interested in? Cool? Psychographics. So demographics and psychographics. If I go into the Cedarville men's soccer team and I have nail polish that I'd like to sell, am I going to be very successful? What's that? Probably not, right? Why? Anybody? You're looking at it. It's number two. Why? Because it's the wrong... It's the wrong motivation. It's the wrong audience. Exactly. So some of you might be really good and your products might be really amazing, but you've been trying to sell them to the wrong people. Is this true? I realized I had a, I had a look in the mirror, folks, a few years ago at my business model and say, you know what? It's too hard to sell to these certain types of people. Even though my heart wants to sell them, they're just... I could, I could be in the room all day long and I could, I could never sell them. Some of you have been trying to go sell your stuff to the wrong audience. What's a Bible verse that talks about this? What? Yeah. Casting your pearls before swine. What, what's, what's kind of the thing? I agree. That's great. What, that, that's a great one. Yeah. Dust the dirt off your feet. Okay. What about a profit is not without? Some of you have been selling your products to your family and friends, and they just know you as little, little Simon, you know, when Simon was five. And so they're not buying from you. But if you were in the right audience, Lillian, you could totally blow up. Is this true? Yes, this is true. Okay. All right, folks, we're landing the plane. We got 17 minutes. Meet your avatar. What is an avatar? Anybody Google it. I don't know. I don't know the answer. What is an avatar? I don't know. What's an avatar? Yeah. Target audience. Okay. Does anyone know Rick Warren created an avatar and he nicknamed it? Does anyone remember this? What, what, was, the, what was the name of Rick Warren's church? Remember this? Saddleback. So he had an avatar that he named, and it's three letters, and it's a guy's name. Anyone got a shot? And it starts with an S. Saddleback Sam. So Saddleback Sam was Rick Warren's avatar even before marketing was a thing. And he said, who's the average person in, in our area? Let's name him Saddleback Sam. And so a lot of businesses do this. They actually come up with an ideal audience member. They name him or her, and then they define him or her, and now they can sell to him or her. So let me guess, uh, Jay, your workshops to build wood bikes are not free. Okay, so already that separates some people. It's probably not $10. Okay, you see what I'm saying? So like if Jay tries to sell his product to the wrong audience, He's going to go look in the mirror and say, I'm a bad entrepreneur, but that's not true. It's that he's trying to sell to the wrong crowd. So I see this all the time. Certain entrepreneurs are amazing. They have an amazing product, but they're selling to the wrong people. And so they, they take it as a identity uh, flaw, but it's not. Okay. So I want you to literally think through the next time we meet page, page eight. Challenges, books, magazines, websites, conferences, artists, and musicians. All right? Anyone have any questions about that? Any questions about this particular thing? All right, let's go to the next page. Not, uh, mass, so at first you met your avatar. Now you master your avatar. Ooh, check this out, folks. The best thing that I that I can tell you is your target audience is is oftentimes your former stuck 
self. Interesting. Why would I say your former stuck self is your is a great target audience? What do you know about your former stuck self? What do you think? You wanted to be unstuck. You Interesting. So, so you know what you, those motivations are. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I love it. Yes. You know what appealed to you. Interesting. Are there Sherpas who are successful in, in the marketplace? What do you think? Are there sages who are successful? Are there strugglers who are successful? Let's talk about that for a moment. Are there strugglers that are social media influencers that you're like, that guy, that lady is a total mess. They're a total struggler. Why are they crushing it? Who's somebody, not in the room, but who's somebody who presents themselves as a struggler? Whether it's in social media, pop culture, whatever. Yeah. Interesting. So she's taken her Tourette syndrome struggle and she's made that her message. Is, does it just stop there? Interesting. Interesting. Wow. How many TED Talks are like this, right? I just saw somebody present themselves the other day on social media. They literally are a burn victim. They're not ashamed of it. And they're talking all about beauty and identity. Interesting. Wow. Okay, good, good. So you need to present. How are you presenting yourself? Could you ever present yourself with the wrong persona and actually lose? If you're a sage and you present yourself as a struggler, can you actually lose credibility? What do you think? Yes, George W. Bush had this exact thing happen, in, in, and I don't study a lot of politics, but I know someone in the room who's a lot smarter than me at politics. But in 1992, it was a town hall meeting, and someone stood up right there, and they asked him a question about the economy and the national debt, and he missed it. He totally missed it because he presented himself, oh, I understand how you feel. And she's like, you actually don't. Ooh. And right there, a lot of people said that is where he lost the election right there. What if you're a struggler and you present yourself as a sage, the guys group over here, a lot of guys over here. Is there anybody online who, you know, they're a, a struggler, but they present themselves as a sage online. There's kind of actually like, um, uh, what do you call it? Um, what's the word? Almost like a, um, I forget what the exact word is, a parody, a parody. It's a parody. Hey, look at my Lambo, look at my house. And then they find out that they rented the Lambo or that it's not really their Lambo or they're just standing there and it's actually somebody else's, right? I mean, you see this a lot. And so authentic, is authenticity important online? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, we're going to say a couple more things, and we have one final interview here, um, which is pretty cool. But, folks, this is a guide. I don't expect that you come in here, and after 90 minutes, you know all this. But this is we don't meet again for three weeks. Why? Because next week is what? Next Friday. Then the Friday after that is a big event that I'm going to put on the screen. You all should seriously consider this. If you like what we're doing today, there's 12 spots left. Hackathon. Hackathon is two weeks from today. You're going to go to Columbus, Ohio. It's $60. Cedarville has paid for 55 of it. And all you need to do is put, pay $5. Is there anybody in the room who went to the last hackathon? I know Annie was here. You, you did? You, in Dayton? Yeah, you went there? I heard it was amazing. Yeah. So so people get together and they 
they why don't you come up really quick here because i think some of you need to be there yeah that's pretty fantastic so essentially what happens is a bunch of people come and a lot of people have already um conceived these ideas of businesses they want to pitch so the first night is they all get up and uh typically when i was there it was about half the group were there just to like be a part of the business and half people there like had ideas mm -hmm. it was like 30 pitches they just had like a few minutes and they're like here's my idea this is what we would be doing yep. and then everyone got a vote on what their favorite idea was yep. and like the top 10 ideas we all made groups around so there's probably like between five to seven people per group and then we had a competition for the weekend we did uh product development ideas we just went through the whole uh building a business essentially in 72 hours in 72 hours it was insane and then we had a massive pitch on sunday and uh we had a competition to see who did the best one so me and uh i think it was eve wellner's group we yeah got third nice cool. and he got first her group one they were wow wow so, yeah it was so much fun it was a lot of work but it was so much fun we got to like we made a prototype and everything okay so uh i think some of you should consider that um 12 spots left and cedarville's paying for most of it okay all right and they, yeah and they have amazing food sorry that's what happened oh i i heard about the different bowls and all that they had yeah okay all right um future customer interview a lot of fun this is an activity you can do with your friend your roommate but you basically interview each other about what the problem is and this is going to give you a ton of clarity so i'm going to invite these guys to come on up come on up uh let's give them a hand I, so listen, I'm not, I don't spend a lot of money. I'm not like a buyer of all kinds of things, but when I see an entrepreneur and they have a good idea, I, I just, I, I can't like the money just starts falling out of my wallet. It's true. Cause I just, I love entrepreneurs. So you guys are part of what I hope you have a demo because you, you sold me on this. What, what, are, yeah. let's talk yeah. about it. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, my name is Johnny. I'm Kyle. And we are two of the five members of Upright Notebook, which yep. is one of the IBC companies here at Cedarville, um, IBC Integrated Business Core. Um, it's a great opportunity just to get uh, the experience to run a small business uh, from the ground up. Uh, we've been working on this for about nine months, kind of in the back, you know, no one knows about it. And we launched today on campus. Um, so that was rather exciting for us. Um, we're super excited just to be able to, uh, like, thank you so much for inviting yeah. us to talk here. Um, we can tell you a little bit about the product. So. And, and, and if you can, demo it, mm -hmm. because it's like a magic pen. I'm just telling you, it's a magic pen. <clears throat> so I'm going to let you um, show us. Yeah. yeah. So here, this is the inside of our leather bound notebook, the upright block. Yeah, you just go put that really close yeah. right there. Yeah. So here we have um, some sticky tabs here that are included, as well as um, the pen here on the front. Also comes with a microfiber cloth. Um, so basically how it works is it has reusable paper technology. Uh, as we flip through, we have, uh, we have planner pages, um, maybe we have daily, weekly, and monthly planner pages. And then we have line pages. We have about 30 line pages and then 20 dotted pages. Dotted pages for um, drawing or doodling kind of thing. And then line pages for typical note taking. Um, so basically how it works is when you, this is also our upright classic, which is a plastic notebook. Um, it's just regular ruled paper, um, like, a, like a regular notebook. The pages are a little bit bigger. Now there are 20 less pages. Um, so basically how the eraser works is on the back of the friction pen, um, you can erase with small mistakes with the friction eraser. Um, maybe you have like a small mistake on your page that you want to change or rewrite. Um, and then also we have the wet microfiber cloth, and I say you finish your whole page here um, and you want to save your notes, you can like, snap a picture with new technology. We're trying to tailor um, not only this product to new technology in a sense of um, taking a picture, uploading online, um, new technology can also scan the writing and turn it into text or PDF. Um, and then once you're done with that, you can share it to your friends, organize, manage it online, and then you can just wipe the entire page with a wet cloth, it can be either this microfiber cloth that comes with it, it can be um, anything like uh, paper towel or a tissue, yeah. whatever, it just needs to be wet. So, and then you fully wipe your page, it's like a brand new page, it's good for doodling, especially for the, the dotted page. 
Um, so it's it's like it's people. like uh, it's almost like a smart notebook. Yep. You call it? Yeah. So it's kind of like the magic behind it is the erasable, erasable paper technology. Yeah. So it's supposed to. We advertise ourselves as the last notebook that you'll ever buy. Um, upright notebooks. I love it. Our website is upright.shop if you want to check us out. Um, we will be tabling in the future. Uh, I think two weeks from, might be tomorrow, we will be tabling again. So feel free to come check us out. Our Instagram is also upright.cedarville. Um, we will be posting weekly posts and reels, kind of um, sharing like the understanding and awareness of our product so people can get a better um, idea of how to use it, different mm -hmm. ways where it can come alive for them specifically, whether that's their major or whatever they want to be doing, doodling kind of thing. Good job. All right. Thanks so Thank much, you. guys. Someone Thank you. Appreciate. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. So I have three minutes left, and I'm just going to land the plane. So first of all, uh, thank you so much for um, being here, everybody. We, we've had a couple dozen people here on this channel, and then it's on about seven other channels. So, you know, Florida, uh, we have somebody's parent in the room. Awesome. But the main point of uh, Q School is really for you all, okay? So I get lit up. I get so excited when people have belief. There's a lot of this thing called the entrepreneur game. Honestly, it's, it's about perseverance, hustle, belief, clarity. To me, entrepreneurship is the most fun game there is. It, it is a game. There's extremely high highs, extremely low lows, but it, but it's exciting. I mean, think about it. You're bringing something to life. You're solving someone's problem. Here's one little thing that I'll close with. I tell all my authors this because authors get writer's block. Authors want to quit. Authors begin to hate their book. It's just true. So what I tell them to do is I tell them to write a letter from a future reader. And the, the letter needs to start like this. Dear Anastasia, right? Dear David, dear Maria, we've never met, but I read your book and it changed my life. Let me tell you how. And you can fill in the word book for I've tried your product. You can, you know, I, I've hired you as my consultant and it changed my life. Let me tell you the story. When you write out the story of your, the transformation, here's the first thing. It often comes true. I've literally done this before for multiple books. And then I end up getting a letter from somebody that I don't even know. And they write almost the exact same letter. But the other thing it does is it fortifies your faith because you're going to want to quit. And so some of you are here today and you're like, you know what, that was 90 minutes of tough stuff. They ask tough questions. But all I want to do is I want to encourage you, if you remain in this for the, for the next three weeks and you do the final three sessions, you're going to walk away. I'm going to teach you how to publish a book. So you'll get your first product on the third largest search engine in the world, Amazon. I'm going to teach you how to start your business. I'm going to teach you how to create your first product. I'm going to teach you how to price your first product. You're going to walk away with so much more clarity. Okay. So again, big thanks to Cedarville. I'm going to close this in prayer and then I'll be around if you have any questions. Okay. God, thanks so much for this amazing group. Thank you that you have brought a, a great crowd online as well. We thank you for all that you're doing at Cedarville. It is truly amazing. Just the support for entrepreneurs that um, Dr. Heyman and many other people who've gone before, uh, the support of Dr. White, Dr. Mack, to, to make this happen. We thank you for all the people in the room and those that are going to watch the recording. We thank you that they have incredible businesses that are literally going to set people free, solve pain, provide vitamins, and you all do this uh, for us. You're the one who gave us the gift of imagination. We dedicate this time to you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, folks. Thanks for coming. Yeah. Thank you. See you in three weeks, everybody.